In this video, we're going to talk about imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers are basically complex numbers with the imaginary unit i. i is equal to the square root of negative 1. i squared is negative 1. And i to the third is equal to negative i. i to the fourth is equal to 1. Now let's talk about why that's the case. Starting with i to the third power. You can think of i to the third power as i squared times i. And since i to the second power is negative 1, i to the third reduces to negative i. In the case of i to the fourth, think of it as i squared times i squared. So it's negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. So with that in mind, how would you simplify these imaginary numbers. Let's say if you have i to the 7th power, i to the 26th power, i to the 33rd power, and i to the 43rd power. Go ahead and try these. What I would recommend doing is breaking up each exponent using the highest multiple of 4. So i to the 7th, you can break it up as i to the 4th times i to the 3rd i to the fourth is 1. i to the third is negative i. So i to the seven reduces to negative i. Now let's move on to the next one, i raised to the 26th power. So what is the highest multiple of 4 just under 26? Well, 24 is a multiple of 4. So what I would do is I would write it as i to the 24 times i squared. Now i to the 24 is basically 4 times 6. So it's i to the 4th raised to the 6th power. i to the 4th is 1. If you, wait, if you raise 1 to the 6th power, it's still going to be 1. And we can replace i squared of negative 1. So thus i to the 26th can be reduced to negative 1. Now let's move on to the next one, i to the 33rd power. The highest multiple of 4 just under 33 is 32. So we can break up 33 as 32 plus 1. And 32 is 4 times 8. So this is going to be 1 raised to the 8th power times i, which is simply i. Now for the last one, i to the 43rd power, we can break it up to i to the 40 times i cubed i to the 40, I'm going to write as i to the 4th raised to the 10th power, and i to the 3rd is negative i. So we can replace i to the 4th with 1, and so the final answer is just going to be negative i. So that's how you could simplify imaginary numbers with very large exponents. Now let's talk about adding and subtracting imaginary numbers. So let's say you have this problem. 5 times 2 plus 3i, let's say minus 4, and then times 7 minus 2i. How would you simplify this expression? Feel free to try this problem if you want to. In order to simplify this expression, the first thing we need to do is distribute. Let's distribute 5 to 2 plus 3i. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 3i is 15i. Negative 4 times 7 is negative 28. Negative 4 times negative 2i is positive 8i. Now at this point, we need to combine like terms. So we can combine 10 and negative 28, that's negative 18. And then 15i and 8i, that's going to be positive 23i. So at this point, our answer is in standard form, a plus bi. a is the real part of the complex number, so is b. But combined, this makes up the imaginary part, b times i. Even though b is a real number, but combined b times i is an imaginary number. So that's the solution for this particular problem. Now, let's work on this example. So here we're going to multiply two imaginary numbers together. So we need to FOIL. 5 times 8 is 40. 5 times 3i, that's going to be 15i. 
and then negative 2i times 8, that's negative 16i, and then negative 2i times 3i, that's negative 6i squared. So all we can do right now is combine like terms and then simplify. Now i squared is negative 1. So 6, negative 6i six squared is going to be positive 6. And now we can combine these two. And so we're going to get 46 minus i. So when simplifying imaginary numbers, or if you're multiplying or dividing, you always want to put your final answer in, compl I mean, in standard form, a plus bi form. So in this example, a is 46, b is the number in front of i, which is negative 1. So you can write it as 46 minus 1i if you want. Now, let's try this one. How can we simplify this expression? 3 plus 2i divided by 4 minus 3i. So what do we need to do here? When dividing complex numbers, one of the best things to do is to multiply the denominator by the conjugate of the complex number. So the conjugate of 4 minus 3i is simply 4 plus 3i. You just need to change the sign between the real and imaginary number. Now, whatever you do to the bottom, you must also do to the top. So we've got to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. Now, we need to FOIL. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 3i, that's going to be 9i. And then 2i times 4, that's 8i. 2i times 3i, that's going to be plus 6i squared. On the bottom, we have 4 times 4, which is 16. Well, we can get rid of the parentheses. Next is going to be 4 times 3i. That's going to be plus 12i. And that's going to cancel with negative 3i times 4, which is negative 12i. And then negative 3i times positive 3i. That's negative 9i squared. So now let's simplify. 9i plus 8i is 17i, and 6i squared is negative 6. These two will cancel. Negative 9i squared. i squared is negative 1, so negative 9i squared is going to be plus 9. On top, we can combine 12 minus 6, which is 6. And on the bottom, 16 plus 9 is 25. So right now, we can write the answer as 6 over 25 plus 7, I mean 17, over 25 times i. So this is the solution in standard form. So we can see that a is 6 over 25, b is 17 over 25. Now what would you do if you were to see a problem like this? How would you simplify this problem? Notice that we don't have an a value in the denominator of the fraction. We only have the b value attached to i. In a situation like this, the best thing to do is to multiply the top and the bottom by i. 7 times i is 7i. 2i times i is going to be 2i squared. On the bottom, we're going to have 5i squared. Now, 2i squared, that can be rewritten as negative 2. 5i squared is negative 5. So now we could put it in standard form. So we have negative 2 divided by negative 5, which is positive 2 over 5. And then positive 7i over negative 5, that's negative 7 over 5i. So now we have our answer in a plus bi form. a is 2 over 5, b is negative 7 over 5. So you always want to simplify your answer to standard form. Now sometimes you may need to solve equations associated with complex numbers. So let's say we have the equation 4x plus 3i is equal to 12 minus 15y times i. So what is the value of x and y in this equation? In order to solve this equation, we need to identify the real portion of the complex number and the imaginary part. On the left side, 4x is the real part because it doesn't contain i. 12 is the real part as well. So we could set 4x equal to 12. On the left side of the equation, 3i is the imaginary part, and so is negative 15yi. So we could set those two equal to each other. On the left, 
we get that x is equal to 12 divided by 4, or 3. And on the right, to isolate y, we need to divide both sides by negative 15i. So we can cancel i. And 3 over 15, if you divide both numbers by 3, you can reduce it to negative 1 over 5. And so that is the value of y in this equation. So that's how you can solve it. Now let's say if we want to solve an algebraic equation like this one. Let's say that x squared plus 36 is equal to 0. What is the value of x? If you subtract both sides by 36, you'll get that x squared is equal to negative 36. And if you take the square root of both sides, you realize that the solution is not a real answer. It involves imaginary numbers. So what is the square root of negative 36? Well, we can write the square root of negative 36 as the square root of positive 36 times the square root of negative 1. The square root of positive 36 is 6. The square root of negative 1 is i. So we get this answer, 6i. By the way, the square root of 36, you can think of it as plus or minus uh, 6, because we do get two solutions here, 6i and negative 6i. And we could test it out to make sure it works. For instance, if we plug in 6i into the equation, let's see if it gives us 0. 6 squared is 36. i squared is just i squared. Now, we know that i squared is negative 1. So we have 36 times negative 1, which is negative 36. And so we get 0 is equal to 0. This works. Now, if we were to try negative 6i, we would also get the same solution because negative 6 times negative 6 is still positive 36. And we're still going to get i squared as well. So the end result is still the same. Thus, the solution in this problem is x is plus or minus 6i. Now let's work on one more example. Let's plot the complex number 4 plus 3i. And at the same time, let's calculate the absolute value of 4 plus 3i. So let's start with the absolute value. So the absolute value of a complex number in standard form is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So in this case, it's going to be the square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared. 4 squared is 16. 3 squared is 9. 16 plus 9 is 25. So the absolute value is going to be 5. Now let's talk about how we can plot imaginary numbers. The x-axis is going to be the real axis. The y-axis will be the imaginary axis. So the real number is 4. So we're going to travel 4 units to the right. Now the imaginary number combined is 3i. So we're going to travel up 3 along the x-axis. So the point is located here. We traveled 4 units to the right and then up 3 units. The hypotenuse of this triangle represents the absolute value of the complex number. And so this is 5. Thus what we have here is the 3, 4, 5 right triangle. And so that's basically it for complex numbers. Hopefully this video gave you a good introduction in terms of how to add and subtract complex numbers, how to multiply, how to divide them, how to solve equations associated with them, how to plot them, and also how to find the absolute value of a complex number in standard form.